Yeah, so the, the plan for now is to dive into um, TVB. First, the graphical user interface. We'll click a little round through and see what we can explore in there. And afterwards, we'll have a look at the command line and do some Python scripting over there. And therefore, I'll sit down and I'll do all the steps on my computer. Will be projected onto the big screen so you can follow every step by yourself. Did everyone find a TVB distribution folder in there? Someone, did everyone log in and BCC and guest? Yeah? Uh, if you have downloaded TVB and you got this running and everything, then that's fine for you. you, you everyone cannot use their own uh, computer if they want to and have the, but we just. Uh, uh, organize it the way that anyone who doesn't bring their own computer can also work with us. That you, you, did, you said you didn't find it or? You got it? Okay, perfect. So everyone has TVB, then uh, please go to your TVB distribution folder. Um, my download is obviously for Mac. There is a TVB app, so if I double press on this button, uh, TVB will open up in my standard browser. Uh, but if you are on your Linux machine, then you can open up this bin folder and there's some something called TVB uh, start in your cases. Uh, TVB start, not command, but in your, uh, it's some shell script or something in, in Linux. Uh, just double press that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. We also, this session will be uh, recorded. Uh, thanks for the reminder. Um, <coughs> new screen recording. New screen recording. Okay, so we are here, this is the, the folder you download from TVB, and uh, you have this bin folder with the binaries or the, the executables, and just press on something called TVB start in your case. Yeah, and once you do this, um, something like this should uh, open up in front of you, is that correct? Does it, does it start at all? Does it take some time, maybe? Oh, oh, right, okay. Uh, so, so execute the script, yeah. So let me see. TV distribution, bin, that's a start. Yeah. Is there also some option like right click and then run the command or so? Okay. Not uh, too bad. So, yeah, so the, um, let's see it like this. Working? No, you can yes. Right. Yeah, no, yeah. And then bin yeah. for binary, yeah. And then enter and then sh. Uh, yep, and then um, space, sp wait space, uh, tvb underscore start. Yeah, and you can also, hmm? no, you can't open tvb start because you missed sh, but you can do like this and then press tap. It will auto complete oh, yeah. to uh, something that's already there. Uh, on the command line node, uh, that's probably matplotlib. Uh, Python package, no, for the moment, doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, doesn't matter at all, actually. Okay. <laughs> yeah, now just wait a moment and then 
you should now uh, then see the screen as you can see it on here on the big screen. No, you will just, uh, this will run in the background, just leave this terminal open or you can minimize it. Ah, now it's open. And and it, it, then nothing happens. Yeah, yeah. It, it takes, uh, yeah. <laughs> Strangely, it takes some time on Linux or I don't know what the reason is. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So once you're here, is there something written in your MATLAB or Octave pass? Just delete this. This is optional. If you leave something in there, it will check for the pass and it won't find MATLAB and then will throw an error. So just delete this bar here and you can increase the space TVB is allowed to use on your disk. Uh, so uh, this is the default setting, I think, 5 gigabytes. Uh, I, I, I said 51 gigabytes, but you can all just 10 gigabytes is uh, enough as well. I think for demo purposes, you know, just have this in mind that if you play more with the GUI and sometimes you can run into this space problem. Okay, once you set all this, then you just hit apply on the right side. <coughs> you, we, we'll get there, we'll get there in a moment. Yeah, we, you, you are, you're, at, you're getting asked for a login. But you already did this page, right? You know what, because we tested this on your computer. I think uh, that's why you didn't get to this page. <laughs> but uh, everyone else, um, uh, we, we'll get to the, okay, my TV crashed, sorry. Um, so once TVB restarts, yep. I don't know. I'm I'm not part of the developer team. Uh, I'm sorry. Cannot help you with that. Um, uh, that wasn't so. The the um, the framework, the GUI framework, was done by a company. Good. Um, did everyone did the settings and you're restarting TVB right now? It takes a second. Did everyone get to this page? Everyone else? Yeah. Okay. So the default credentials are written down here: admin and pass. We we'll just use this to log in. So this is not running an, on any server right now. There's no internet connection required. This is all run locally on your computer. Yes. You can find the credentials and the uh, text on the left side here. And then press login on the right. I think the, the um, for I don't know why, but uh, the, the starting period takes yeah, the longest. Yeah. After this, uh, after that, it runs oh. smooth. Uh, okay, for those of you who have logged in, press, you, you find a menu bar uh, on the, let me, can I put this full screen? Oh. Yeah, you can, uh, you can press this project button down here. So you guys are locked in, then you press project down here, 
the menu and now you go to list of all projects. You guys find that? List of all projects. Right. Right, you you shouldn't have any. This one? Where did you press? Did you press project? No, we just press project and we get the part project. Yeah, that's fine. That's how it's supposed to be. But why is the top thing filled with things for you? This list of all projects? No, we don't have. No. Okay, that's strange. Do you use views No, but you're on the project page already. What do you, so that, that's where you, okay. Um, it, it worked on the, on your computers as well, so when I tried it, you, you can, yeah, that's, okay. Okay, still not restarting there? Strange. Use the operator. Yeah. Oh, you didn't erase the MATLAB pass? Uh, no. Yeah, I did it in the end because then it didn't work. Um. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Try it. Yeah. Oh. Add command. Is that? That's a B, right? Ad, admin. Yeah. Did you change any password settings? No, or something? I didn't do anything. I didn't even get to this page yet. I so. have the same setting with her here. Yeah. This page shows no password. Mm. Yeah. Okay, something's wrong here. Yeah. Can I close this for a moment? <laughs> yeah, yeah. TVB clean should actually erase everything. Oh, okay. Different stuff done. Okay, no TVB. TVB. TVB start. Okay. Should we still um, change the spine? Right. Just it. Nope. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Can you check? Yep. Pass. P A S S. Yeah. Can you? Um, and uh, uh, ex execute tvb oh. underscore clean. That would uh, erase everything else. Clean underscore clean dot sh on, on the command line, yeah. <coughs> that erases everything and then start tvb again. And then. Okay, so um, I hope for some of you at least it works. We have these issues every time, I know. Um, so yeah, if you get to the list of projects, you should see one project for you guys uh, called default project. And I have here some more because I've played around with the graphical user interface some time more. And uh, this default project contains some um, data to play around with and we will use this now uh, to run our own first simulation. So if you go into this project um, by clicking on project data on the right side, <coughs> You should see uh, not that much as me uh, because, right, uh, up here are already some time ser simulated time series, uh, which we will do in a second. And down here you have all the default data, which is the input for your simulation. So if you uh, look in by detail in here, you will find um, things like the connectivity. Where are we? Here's the connectivity. You will see... Um, the location for sensors like EEG, MEG, SEG, you will have the different cor uh, cortical, uh, the surfaces, cortical surface, face surface. Um, 
and also the lead field metrics to compute um, or to, to project source activity onto EEG or MEG sensors. Uh, okay, so we would now like to look at what we are really dealing with here. So let's have a look at the connect home in the connectivity viewer. Therefore, click on connectivity and this window should open up for you. Not annotations, only connectivity. Are we here? And then visualizers and connectivity visualizer. Yeah, visualizers and then connectivity visualizer and you should land at this page. Sometimes it's a little bit uh, cropped. Uh, you have to increase the size of your or um, decrease the size of your uh, the, the presentation in your browser. Uh, but you should see on the left side a three-dimensional representation of your network and on the right side um, and, um, the matrix. So different colors representing different um, connection strength. So each row here and each uh, column is one, one brain area and the colors indicate their connection strengths. Now you could also click on uh, edge colors and show this plus button here in the left upper corner and then you will have this network representation even more visual. Okay, so here in this, um, uh, in this viewer you can also manipulate your connectome. Yeah? You can delete uh, areas or you can delete different edges or increase the connection strengths here um, and then you can give this a new uh, a, a new name a new connect home and then save this with the star which would create a new connect home but we won't do this for the moment or you, you can if you want to play around with it but um, we'll just stick with the normal connect home uh, and take this for to run our first simulations yes uh, can you shrink uh, the, the <laughs> you just see the three-dimensional representation? Yeah, command and minus would shrink on your Mac, would shrink the, uh, and then it should appear. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you. Okay. So, did everyone reach the connectivity viewer? Most of you are still playing around with it. Are you? Okay. Cool. So the next step would be to use now this connectome in a simulation. Therefore, click on simulator down here. <coughs> and you should land on this page. Now, this is the simulation cockpit where you can adjust and set all the parameters uh, for your simulation to run. You have uh, this long field here in the middle uh, where all these settings are made. On the left side, you will see the history, so a list of all the simulations that have already been done in, in this project so far. And on the right side um, is the viewer to visualize our simulation results, so mainly the time series you will see. But we, we have uh, different uh, visualization options which we will explore later. So for the moment, um, yeah, we will start now to, to generate our own very first simple simulation and uh, we will simulate with this local dynamic model, which you see here, uh, with the generic 2D oscillator. Yeah? So in, in this drop-down menu here, um, local dynamic model, you can cho choose from a variety of different uh, TVB models, TVB local models. And for the moment, we use this generic 2D oscillator model. It's um, it's a simple 2D model, yeah, which uh, Andreas already talked about uh, and showed um, the different bifurcations on it. So we want also want to explore this on a, on a face plane. Therefore, we press this button up here and choose face plane. Does it work? So if, if you find uh, this menu up here and choose faceplane, 
you should be sent to um, this new page. On the left, you have, uh, again, the different parameters and settings. And on the right side, you see uh, the uh, vectors on the face plane. And what you can do now is you can just press in this face plane, and a trajectory will be drawn from this specific initial conditions. Yeah? So the trajectory is pretty short. This is the, the reason for this is that we only compute 512 um, integration steps. So down here, you have the scroll bar, where if you move the slider to the right, you, incre oops, you, you increase the um, amount of steps being computed for each uh, initial condition. What you can also do, uh, because this, um, so right now we integrate the differential equations with this Hoyne integrator and using an integration step size of 0 0.0122 2, 2, and so on. But the model is fairly stable, so it also works if we set the integration step size to 0.5 um, milliseconds. Yeah? So choose the Hoyne integrator and then put integration step size to 0.5. And then you should see actually the trajectories reaching the uh, stable fixed point where these two null clients intersect. Yep. How can you reset it? How can you see the directly above the integration step, you really need all of integration. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, I'll be back and I'll be with you in a minute. One second. <laughs> no worries. So, so um, everyone reached uh, this point. Then now let's see what we can do when we change the parameters. So this is the default parameters which are, are given by TVB, but you are obviously obviously free to play around with it. Uh, what we'll do now is in this parameter A we'll increase it. Yeah, increase it from minus two to. Uh, I don't know, minus 0.24 in, the, in this case. And what you see is um, something very similar to what Andreas was describing before. So this A is the par bifurcation parameter. And as we increase it, uh, the trajectory takes more and more time to reach the fixed point until uh, a certain critical value where you have this bifurcation now, where you have you, the, the, the behavior of the, um, the system changes. Yeah. And you have this big limit cycle. So now if you press on the outside of this limit cycle, you reach, you reach it after some, uh, some circles, some spirals. But even if you press in the inside, you will circle outside. So that's a stable limit cycle, just by playing around with TVB, not any complicated mass involved. Do you increase the parameter A? Yeah. Uh, what, what value do you have? 0 0.24. 0 0.24, yeah, increase it further. Happens at round 2 or 1.5? 1 1.74, 1, 1 there's the expert. You get it? OK, perfect. <laughs> now you can also give this parameter configuration the name, yeah? Call it uh, my oscillator or my fixed limit cycle. Or give it any name, it doesn't matter actually. And um, you can click uh, save this new parameter configuration. And then you can use this on the simulation cockpit. OK, so we would go now. So this, is, um, this was a short introduction onto this face plane viewer of TVB. Um, what, yeah, what I wanted to show you is that you can explore your uh, local dynamic model within TVB as well. Obviously, you are a little bit constrained to this uh, two-dimensional face plane. If we discuss three-dimensional or even higher dimensional model as this, uh, like the Janssen Red model, and it's hard to visualize it on a two-dimensional surface. OK, uh, so back to the simulation cockpit. Now um, we got to know our model, how it behaves if we uh, increase this parameter A. Uh, now we uh, use, will use this to run a simulation. So we saw the connectome and we saw the local dynamic model. And these are the main two building blocks to run a simulation in TVB. 
So give the simulation uh, a name, call it BCCN workshop. Um, and then the first parameter you have to adjust is uh, your connectome. If you click on the menu here on this bar, there will be a drop-down bar where, or menu where all the connectomes which are uploaded in this project will be listed. So for now, it's just one, the, connect, the fold connectome. Use this one. Then use a, we, use a, we define a coupling function. So there are different, many different coupling functions here. We choose just the linear scaling function to, uh, and this parameter A is the scaling parameter. We, we scale our, the weights in our connectome by this factor. Oh yeah, is, every, is it working for everyone? I uh, execute TVB clean, underscore clean, and then restart sometimes. Or at least it fixed that uh, over here. Yeah. Yeah. Is it working now fine? Yeah, now it's not working. OK, perfect. So is, that, is everyone more or less on the simulation cockpit site again? Yeah, yeah. What's the, what's the what's the again? What's the oh, I'm sorry. I'll increase the. Uh, <laughs> okay, <I'll, laughs> later on I'll shrink it again, but for the moment we'll stick with that one, okay. Um, so we use the default connectome, we call it BCCN workshop, we use the linear coupling function, and the scaling parameter A is set to 0 0.05. What? The next parameter would be then conduction speed, which is the, so in TVB we, uh, we saw the connectome derived from the con uh, connection strengths, but you also have distances between the regions. So you need some uh, conduction speed and the length to uh, compute the time delay between regions. Um, so three, the fault parameter that's okay for the moment. We can define a cortical surface and a stimulus, but we won't do this for, the, yeah? I'm sorry, if you press on this uh, question mark, you'll see it's millimeters and milliseconds. Thank you. Yep. So no cortical surface, no <laughs> stimulus. The local dynamic model, the generic 2D oscillator, that's fine. You can, you can increase A or just leave it at a fold one. Uh, as you saw, you, you will see how, how it differs. Um, we will, after this, uh, do another simulation where we will explore the parameter space and then see how different, how different uh, parameters will int, uh, uh, generate different dynamics when, once regions are connected in the brain. One important thing to modify is the integration step uh, size. So um, increasing it to 0.5 will make the computation a lot faster. So here it's always um, a trade-off between uh, the, uh, the precise solution and uh, computation time. But this, the simpler model is fairly stable with a huge step size of 0.5. Okay, integration steam is point integrator and then integration step size of 0.5. And for the monitors, uh, pick temporary subsample. Leave sampling period and model uh, variables to watch as it is. Temporary, temporary subsample. Temporary subsample, yeah. Yeah, the long range coupling. Yeah. A is uh, 0 0.05. Zero. Just leave it. Okay, if you're done, press the play button and run your first simulation. So every time something is computing or an operation is running, you will see a, a blue, a blue shaped triangle up here or there. And so this one finished pretty fast. And you can see the result, the resulting time series on the right, on the right side of your screen. I have a question. So we are now having this very simple Hoyn model for 
Yeah. Right. So we, you have this the, the, the harness the integration scheme to solve the differential equations of your generic 2D oscillator. Yeah. In each node, you have this oscillator, okay. and now they are connected through the network. And the strength of connection is defined by your connectome. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so was everyone able to run a simulation? Um, what again? What does it say? Too easy. <laughs> Didn't get. Where's the? Uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. I'll just see what it is. Ah, uh, Julie is already there. Julie, just because she put a command for the foot dog. Ah, okay. Okay, that is not working. Mm-hmm. Let me help you. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Start now. Okay, I see the screens look great. What, what is that uh, that we see here? Yeah, the time series of the uh, local variables. So if you press on this result button, uh, you see the two files generated of your simulation. Choose time series region, visualizers. And then Brain Activity Viewer in 3D and 2D. He died. <laughs> he died. Well, why is that? There is no more activity. <laughs> and how come? Yeah. Well, why is there no more activity? Okay, I have to shrink now the view. Okay, it doesn't really adjust this one here. Oh, yeah, it does. So not much happening really, right? I mean, there's the settings, the default settings we put into the model. Where you see, we start with some random initial conditions. That's why you see some oscillation going on in the beginning. Yeah, but every, every um, node in your network has the intention to spiral down into this fixed point. Yeah, so, to create some, I mean, this is a, even this is a very nice model to uh, uh, investigate stimulation patterns. So, uh, there's a, a, a paper on, from Andreas Spiegler who, who used a setting like this, so the connectome and uh, the stable, um, stable, no, this, um, yeah, stable fixed point where you then input a stimulus and you see how uh, this energy then gets tra transmitted through the network. But uh, yeah, for the moment, for this, um, for this workshop, we won't use any um, stimulus, but we will do a parameter exploration now. So please go back to the simulator page. And we will vary two parameters, the global coupling scaling and A of your local model. We vary both of them and we will see how then activity will change. I will see if it, the patient still dies or <laughs> uh, if there's something else. Yeah. All right. Is everyone on the um, page then? Okay. <coughs> um, then you're still uh, you're opening the or you're still open the the old simulation which we just did. Uh, press on this um, pencil button here. Uh, okay, I have to, sorry, yeah, please remind me of you. So on the left side you have uh, BCCN workshop. Okay. 
and then copy. There's a button called copy. <laughs> just, just this button <laughs> pressing. So the pencil and then copy. And this will create a new simulation template with the parameters from the old one. And it's called copy of BCDN virtual. That's fine. You can name it anything you want. Um, now we will uh, vary uh, across two parameters. One is A of your long range coupling function. So hit this button, expand range. And then you'll be asked to enter um, a start value and uh, end value and a step size. Yeah. And <coughs> which do we, OK, so we varied from 0 to 0.3 and steps of 0.5. Yeah, like this. So we'll vary this parameter from 0 to 0.5 instead of 0.05. Yeah. So if you enter these this values here, uh, you will see um, a message popping up in the right upper corner that with this configuration, it will run 10 uh, simulations sequentially. And the next parameter is we will tune also A of your local dynamic model. So here, local dynamic model, generic 2D oscillator. Hit again, expand range. And then vary from, what do we do? From minus 2, so the default one, to plus 2 in steps of 1. And then again, and if you enter this, there should be a message on the right upper corner, range configuration, 50 operations. Yeah. And then you can hit the play button. So it's really just these two parameters, long range coupling function, linear, and then parameter A from um, 0 to 0 0.05, uh, 2.5 uh, in step size of 0.05. And the other one is your local dynamic model, generic 2D oscillator, A, from minus 2 to 2 in steps of 1. And then hit the play button. And this can take a minute or two, maybe even three, depending on the machine you're running it. If, again, if something is running on TVB, then you will have this blue uh, triangle here. Green means it's finished, blue it's in progress, red means there's some error. <coughs> Are there any questions so far? Has everyone uh, gotten to this page, entered the parameters, and run the simulation? Okay, cool. So did it finish for you? Mine has finished. Not yet? Okay, now we wait a few more seconds. So if it finished, uh, you should see something like this on your right side. Oops. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's correct. So this is the result. Did everyone get there? Is it still running? Yeah. Okay. You're looking for a faster machine <laughs> to run simulations even faster? No. Um, so this is your, the result of your parameter exploration, right? In a long, we did two-dimensional explora exploration, and one was the, this one, oh, I have the mouse, sorry. Uh, this one here is the um, A of your uh, local dynamic model, which we varied from minus two to two in steps of one, so this axis. And down here you have the axis of your uh, global coupling scaling factor. Um, so there, for each possible uh, parameter combination of these two, there's one simulation. And now there's two different metrics, metrics you can choose, one for the node size and the other for the color, which are written up here. So you can change between variance, synchrony, and so on. So there's different metrics. Um, and TV also, as you see down here, has different analysis functions. Yeah, if you click down here, you, you can open up a window and select time series to analyze with different tools. But uh, TVB more or less is um, uh, only a um, simulation tool or simulation platform. So when I or when, our, when we work with TVB, we run our simulations in the, in the Python interface and then do uh, the analysis of the time series, of the generated time series uh, with some other tools. Okay, so uh, let's um, have a look at our simulation results. So um, 0.05 and minus 2 was the simulation of, of uh, was the result of our first simulation. So we already know what hap what's happening here, right? And we were not really surprised, or we were surprised in the first uh, second that the, the patient is dead, yeah? <laughs> that um, there's no activity going on. But we, it, doesn't, it didn't come with much surprise when we think of the local dynamics, yeah, which have these... Um, uh, which spiral down into this fixed point, uh, we more or less uh, saw this coming. So what happens if we increase A? Yeah, if we, we, we saw before in this exploration that if we increase A across a certain critical value, you have these sustained oscillations. So let's see what happens with a global coupling of 0 0.5, 0 0.05, and um, A of your local model uh, 2. Just click on the node, choose the visualizer, and then choose Brain Activity Viewer in 3D and 2D. So now you see more activity going on? OK. So also not very surprising, right? Because um, we changed our local model, and we already saw our, our local model would behave differently across a certain uh, critical value. Um, it's more or less not so surprising that once we connect all of them, they still s oscillate. Yeah. But what I also want to show you is, if you go back again to our, uh, use this button up here and go to your sim simulator cockpit, uh, where you see the um, results. Sometimes uh, this graphical user interface is sometimes a little uh, slow, so uh, we're so um, we uh, the default value for uh, a in our local dynamic model was minus two, so this one here, and we just had a look at this simulation up here and before this one. But what happens if we leave um, the parameter of your local model at minus two and only increase your global coupling. So go somewhere here at 0.45. Choose visualizers and then. Yeah, any, any one of the high ones, 0 0.5, 0 0.45, any one you can choose. You can look at any of the, all of them if you want in here later, but for the moment.
Or is it actually 0 0.45? Didn't I set it to 0.3? Okay, so you see a different result. Is that true? Yeah, yeah you see a uh, different simulation from the first one where all activity died out and from the second one where you had sustained oscillations everywhere in the network. And here you have uh, still more or less sustained oscillation but only in, in some parts of your network. Yeah? Because every uh, node really has the same intention to go down to the fixed point but because through transmissions and the network you find different different solutions in the end. Okay, so that was. Um, did any, anyone, everyone, get here uh, a similar view, similar results? Yeah. If not, then ask questions. We're here to help. Yes. I just want to know um, how do you change the, the color scale? You have a, a button up here in the right corner where you can change the speed of the visualization, the color, color scheme, the, some, the face. And you can also do points display. You can visualize the surface, triangles. So the different visualization options there. OK. Good, so that was, are there any questions uh, so far to the graphical user interface? Uh, because if not, then we, we have 15 minutes left. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, actually I had, I had planned to do the uh, command line interface and uh, let's do it, um, let's do it quickly. Okay, so we're, we're done now with the GUI. Uh, we do the command line interface now. Therefore, yeah, just, you can leave this open or close it, doesn't matter. Uh, Go back to your, um, well, you, know, you guys have to do it through the command line. Go to your uh, um, binary folders and then press sh ipython underscore notebook dot command. So there's a, uh, there's a file called ipython underscore notebook. And um, yeah, I tried it. Oh, not really. Sorry. But here, this one here. IPython notebook. Uh, there should be one as well in Mac. What? So if you execute um, I, the IPython notebook, uh, binary, you should end up here, or the, the, the script there, and then you, you should end up here and see all the demo scripts. So this is Jupyter. Are you familiar with uh, Python and Jupyter notebooks? Yeah? Okay, most of you. Cool. So there's a lot of... What? Yeah, but it's the same. Like, I think because if you were where you go... Uh, you can, but I think you can still. Uh, it doesn't work like this, right? Can you, how do you copy with right click? Copy link. <laughs> oh yeah, for, okay, so for Linux you have to copy the link which is uh, shown in your command line and paste it into your uh, browser. Right, what? I right click an open link work? Okay, then that's. <laughs> problem loading page. In what sense? I, but you closed it, right? Yeah. No, I think they went down. And then execute it? Yeah. And now. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
So there are some IPython notebooks, some demo tutorials, um, which you can follow along. Like uh, if you go to tutorial S1 region simulation, there is a lot of, um, you have these uh, cells with your code in here, and then there's a lot of mm, uh, comments which explain really w in, what, in every step what we're really doing here. And then, oh, sorry. I have to change the kernel again. Poison 2, I think that's the one. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Okay, and you, you can really just um, execute all the cells here, and then you should end up with the same results um, as already loaded there. But we'll, we won't follow these notebooks. Uh, we'll create uh, our own for the moment, and I'll explain for you what we are doing in every step and see if we can run a similar of the same simulation as we did in the graphical user interface. So create a new notebook, um, pressing new, and then Python 2. So there are different kernels here, but you should only see one. And you should open up a, a new notebook, right? Un, it's called untitled something, and you should see their cells. So, is that, has everyone got there? Is everyone, has everyone opened a new notebook? Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll show you in a minute. I'll show you. I just want every, Julie, can you give me head signs if everyone's fine? Just watch from behind them and see if, the, if everyone's in the moment. Thanks. So if everyone's here at the, the notebook, then we'll now start in by typing the Python commands and execute all the steps. Do you have a question? Uh, if you, if you uh, press new. No, you, you should. Are you using the TVB package? The installed one? Yeah. Are you running Python as well on your machine uh, on a different setting or are you are you using Python in any other sense? Currently no. Okay. But maybe I changed it that I only use default Python. Yeah, maybe so in Jupyter you should have then the different kernels installed. And um, if if you if you you are using Jupyter for yourself as well then you have different <laughs> So the, the first command we will run is this magic called pylab and bagg, which will import the uh, namespace from NumPy and matplotlib. So to Python libraries, very, um, very useful. NumPy is to compute an array, and matplotlib is for visualizing uh, data. OK. And then the next one is. The next one is from tvb.simulator.lab, import, and the star means everything. So import all the, the functions there are in tvb. So, so at the core of um, TVB, 
there is a Python object called simulator. Uh, so if you type in simulator dot simulator and brackets and execute the cell, um, you, it will uh, list you the, the content of a simulator object. So in the default one is uh, similar to the one you have in the GUI with the generic 2D oscillator model with the Horn integration scheme a linear coupling function, convection speed 3 and so on. But uh, we'll now begin uh, to, um, we'll go through this step by step and load our own data and see how we can manipulate it and run our simulation. So let's begin with the first one, initial conditions. Uh, you, you can leave them empty and then TVB will um, uh, generate the randoms, um, random numbers, random initial conditions. But you can, if you really want to, uh, sometimes this is important as you saw before, that different models depend on your, uh, on your initial conditions and you will uh, um, find different solutions for your simulation. Uh, okay, but let, let's leave this empty for the moment. Coupling function, uh, let's define one um, object called coupling linear with a equals 0.05. So we will create now a coupling function, a linear coupling function with the scaling factor a equals 0.05. So we, we de define this now in different variables and then in the end we enter them all into one simulator object and then we run a simulation, okay? So coupling is linear. The next thing would be the stimulus, uh, but we leave this empty so none is fine for us. and We don't uh, inject any stimulus now. Um, so we can focus on the integrator. And we use uh, Hoyne deterministic, but we want to increase the step size. The default one is 0.01, and that's um, very precise, but takes a lot of time. So there's integrators. Uh, is it this way? Yeah, Hoyne deterministic. D3 is 0.5, right? Can you see it there at the end? Uh, even further. Okay, so we have our um, coupling function, we have the integration scheme. The next thing we can enter into uh, the mm, simulator object is the surface. We skip this, but we have to provide a connectivity, so we uh, have to load the connectivity. Luckily, there is a function um, which w we can use to load the default connectome. Otherwise, you can provide just um, a matrix, a symmetric matrix, um, which would contain the weights and track lengths for your connectome. Yeah. So normally, this derives through DTI um, or even tracer studies in mice, for example. Um, Here we use the default one. Whoops. Okay, so SC equals connectivity dot connectivity with capital C and load default equals true. So this will load exactly the same connectome as you saw before in the um, graphical user interface. You don't have to type in this, but uh, here I just want to show you that that's the connectivity matrix we are dealing with, okay? Mm. Simulator, okay, we have a coupling function, integration scheme, SC, and we can leave the connect conduction speed as it did, that's fine, and uh, simulation lengths at one second, also fine. Um, but now we want to um, adjust our local model. So a generic 2D oscillator is okay, but maybe let's say we don't want the default parameters with A equals minus 2. Um, we want a different one. Uh, we want to increase it, say a 0.1, okay. So 
we define uh, the local model variable with models generic to the oscillator a equals one. And the last thing we have to set is the monitor. So what do we want to record from this uh, simulation? So there's things like EEG, MEG, what you saw before, Bolt. But here we'll stick to the same thing we did in a graphical user interface. We just use the uh, 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 temporal subsample. So, so there's monitors.subsample. And then I think it's called period equals one. I can also leave a that default period is fine as well. You can actually let's erase this. Okay, so money source that subsample. And then we actually have everything. So we, we now put all this thing into a, a simulator object and then we use the simulator dot run function or method. Um, and this will generate as an output. Okay. Did everyone get to this point? Is the, did everyone get to this point so far? Yeah? yeah? Okay, perfect. So uh, you probably know this um, if you're working with Jupyter Notebook. I uh, just want to mention that if you press uh, tab and um, shift, you can open up this help window, right? Um, you will see uh, all those things, the input, um, the arguments you can put into this object. So we're um, the connectivity, the coupling, initial conditions, and so on. And there's some more explanation as uh, on how to define all this. Okay, so we had um, coupling function yeah. equals our couple variable. And we had the integrator. Sorry, can I? No. Then we had connectivity. Oops. What's the model? Okay, model. It's a local model. Oh, yeah, thanks. Happens every time. So, yeah, just give into the simulator object everything we've defined before. <coughs> And then put in the command sim.configure. And this should be the output. So the sa a similar list like we had before, but now uh, with our settings. So linear equals 0.05. OK, we have changed our integration scheme. The connectivity is now there. And gen generic 2D oscillator is the same, but subsampling monitor is the one we defined. Okay. Has anyone questions to the step? Did everyone, was everyone able? Cool. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now your simulator object has a, fun a method called run. And we'll save the output of this function into a variable called result. And shouldn't take too long, and uh, yeah. simulation should be finished. If there are any questions, please ra really raise your hands where we can help or I can come around.
the word? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you look into result, there's actually um, a list, yeah. So if you if you look into the uh, the brackets here, the outside indicates the list, um, the the square bracket. Then the round one is uh, Python tuple, and in there there's one array, which contains the time points, time steps, and there's another one which looks a little bit weird, but this is the uh, simulated time series. <coughs> so we can do the following: time is uh, the first array, and then data is the second array in the tuple. No. So the the time array was one dimensional. Yeah, just um, a long list of numbers. So for each time step, where we saved our simulation result. But now let's have a look at the dimensionality of this data array. Looks a little bit strange, but um, it does make sense if we um, uh, concern our model. So we have a simulation length of 1,000 milliseconds, and we set the period to 1, I think, or was it 0.9? Yeah. So we have 1,000 um, <coughs> time steps sampled. That's OK. We have, and our connectome has 76 regions. <coughs> okay, so for each region, we have uh, 1,000 um, time points. So there's a one here and a one there. Now, the generic 2D oscillator model has, uh, two, is two dimensional, has two state variables, and we could actually record both of them. The default setting is to record just, I think, the, the one called V or W. Um, and, but you could also say, okay, I'm interested in both of them. I want to record both of them, and then uh, you would have something uh, two here. Yeah, but and there's more more complicated model like for example, Jan Jansen Ritt, You could record all six um, state variables, and then you would have six dimensions here. And then there are even other models like this uh, Stefanesco Gieser uh, three-dimensional model uh, Petra taught um, this morning about. It has different modes, so um, you have excited excitatory neurons and inhibitory neurons. But um, then on each side, you have um, three different like, subpopulations of them with different membrane excitability. Or, um, like the, the parameters uh, are diverging um, or are different between them. Okay, then you would have a different number here. But OK, so here we just really have a two-dimensional array. So we can get rid of the other dimension and just say data equals numpy dot. Oh, you can actually just say squeeze, I think. Yeah. Data equals squeeze the resulting matrix. So the result will be a two-dimensional array. Uh, let's plot our results, and then we're done. <laughs> yeah. OK, so data equals squeeze result, and then the index for the data array. Then data shape should be um, just a two-dimensional array. And then in the end, you can just say plot, I think, again. Yeah. OK, yeah, plot. And plot data will plot the time series with matplotlib. Did this work for everyone? Please raise your hand if there are any questions or we can help. For, for those of you who are finished, you can just go back up uh, into the commands and yeah, really play around with the parameters here. Execute everything again in a row and then see how the outcome changes. Uh, since we are, uh, this is the, the network is not as big as uh, in other simulations, and the, it's very short simulation lengths. The uh, computation is pretty fast.
And you can as well here see how it uh, changes. Okay, so um, this was it. Yep, sorry. What, what did you change now in the um, I just, what did I do? I changed uh, A from your local model, A equals zero. But you can, yeah, do whatever you want. Coupling, or increase coupling, let's see what happens. Let's increase coupling. And A equals minus one. Yeah. And I was saying, yeah, you can then also The what? The time series? Yeah. This is your state variable of your your local model. It's the V your, or, or W. I mean, generic 2D oscillator is um, a phenomenolo phenomenological model. So it doesn't really represent any biophysical entities. It's not firing rate. It's not synaptic uh, gains or anything like that. Um, this you would have uh, the Ensign-Ritt model, for example, or Wilson-Cohen or reduced one one. This is just, um, we, we, we stick to this simple example just uh, for demonstration purpose now. Um, but, I, but I mean, you can even do sophisticated um, explorations with this model. Um, yeah. So that um, was it for the graphical user interface and the command line. Um, if there are no, in, no further questions, then we would now switch to uh, the use case of epilepsy. And I thank you guys for participating. Thank you. Thank you.